The father was out shopping with his young daughter uh, and while browsing the cereal aisle, he looked down and realised that the little girl was no longer by his side. Panicking, he frantically searched the store, calling for her name, calling out her name, and after a few tense minutes, he found her standing with a strange woman in the bakery section. Oh, there you are, he exclaimed. But his daughter looked at him and then at the woman and said, Daddy, I think you're lost. This is my new mummy. And the woman burst out laughing and it took him a moment to realise his daughter was just joking. Have you ever had trouble losing things? I'm sure none of us are excluded from that question. When we lose something that is important to us, it can be very frustrating. It can induce panic. It can induce anxiety. And when I start looking for something that I have lost, Beth will tell you that I expect that the object should jump out at me. Have you seen my keys, darling? Well, they are, they're just there, right where you left them. That is so helpful, is it not? How frustrating to lose your keys or your wallet. Or if you were doing some overseas travel like we did on one occasion and we arrived in Halifax, Newfoundland, and our luggage didn't arrive. And you're off to the Walmart to get our goodies for a couple of nights. When we lose something, it becomes an all-out search, does it not? It becomes a very high, a really high priority. We look everywhere, we retrace our steps, we look through drawers, under cupboards, and we try to remember when we last saw this thing that was lost. Well, the series that we are in, that Simon commenced last week, revolves around the concept of things that are lost. And in Jesus' time, there were people who did not understand what the priorities of Jesus were. Let me take you back to the first two verses of chapter 15. The tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. You see, it was the religious leaders of that day that did not understand Jesus. It was their conclusion that since God is infinitely righteous and holy, then God will only like those who are righteous and holy. And their belief is you shouldn't like or want to be with those we call sinners. You know, those thieves, those publicans, those prostitutes and so on. But they misunderstood Because people are the priority of our living God. God is vitally interested in every person in his creation, including you and I. And when Jesus came to earth, he reflected that priority of his heavenly Father. People were Jesus' priority. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. He came to help those that had lost contact with God. He didn't have any pre-qualifications before he spoke to them. He sought them out, and the Jewish leaders did not understand that kind of thinking at all. So that's why he had to tell them these three stories that we have in Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, so that they might get the point of what God was really like and so here we have the story I won't read it again because you've had it so beautifully illustrated in cartoon fashion through a simple yet profound act of a woman searching diligently for a lost coin Jesus conveys the relentless love and joy of God upon the repentance of a single sinner single person This lost coin parable or story that Jesus told is not just simply an allegory of things that are lost, misplaced valuables. It's a deep theological statement about the kingdom of God. It's a huge statement about the nature of repentance 
and the rejoicing in heaven that accompanies the return of a lost soul to God's embrace. It serves as a powerful reminder that no one is too insignificant in the eyes of a living God and that every effort is being made to bring back those who have strayed. The stories that Jesus tells, the parables, challenge us to discover the hidden truths or the hidden truth that he is endeavouring to share with us, to teach us. And each of these three stories, the lost lamb last week, the lost coin this week and the lost son next week when Simon shares that, it's a picture intended to illustrate the joy in the heart of our Heavenly Father when someone who was lost is found. In the parable of the lost sheep, a person can be lost just purely by being indifferent. They become preoccupied with life, drifting away with something without intending to do so. There is no rebellion, there is no intent to be lost. They simply wake up one day to find that life has moved them away from where they ought to be and so they find themselves lost. The lost coin referred to is a small piece of silver worth in our money just a couple of cents. The lady in our story that Jesus tells us had 10 of them. The total, probably the total value of what her wealth was in that moment. 10 coins, maybe a couple of dollars, not very much we might say, but it was more than money to this woman because it had great sentimental value. We learn from the customs of this period that this was part of her dowry. When a woman married, she took the money that she had accumulated through her life and sewed it into her headdress, which she wore on her wedding day. She used 10 silver coins, which is why our Lord might have picked this number to illustrate the story. And these 10 coins were of tremendous significance to this woman about to be married. They represented not just the value of the money, but all that she had in her possession to contribute to her marriage. This headdress was of such value to the woman at the time that by law it was even impossible for it to be taken and then pay off another debt. In Eastern custom, the woman contributed this small amount to her marriage. The bridegroom paid the rest. And so she literally turns the house upside down in search for this missing coin. And the point, I think, of this story is that something was lost and it was lost where? It was lost at home. I think that's significant. Home is where you expect to lose things, right? The coin did not wander off by itself. It was still in the place of safety where it had landed where it was mistakenly put. Nevertheless, it was lost, probably through carelessness, maybe neglect, although nothing is said in our story about how it came to be lost. It may have been by some accident. And she's unaware of the fact that this coin is lost until suddenly she discovers it's gone. And when she realises that the coin is missing, she restored to a flurry of activity to try and recover it because it is of such extreme value to her. This story challenges us, challenges me. Do we have something lost in our family, in our home? More importantly, is there someone in our family, my family, that is lost? Jesus is not talking about things, but he's illustrating the value of lost people. Is there someone lost in your family? A son? A daughter? We've raised them in our Christian homes. We've taught them the scriptures as best as we've been able to. We've helped them to memorize scripture. We've taught them how to know the Lord. We've taught them how to walk with Jesus. 
But as they grow up, we face the realisation that these children have lost interest in the things of the Lord. How often have we heard someone say, when I was a kid, my parents made me go to Sunday school and I went all my life. I won all the medals and prizes for attendance. But as soon as I got out on my own, I quit. I've never gone back. It never meant anything to me. I think that's the situation that Jesus is trying to get us get through to us in this story and so this woman in this story launches upon a remarkable campaign when she realized that this valuable coin was lost she went into action and her activity reveals the concern God has for people who are lost she did three things which I think are pretty important first she lit a lamp she realized that she was working in the dark She needed more light to search. And I would suggest, I would like to extrapolate that by saying that if we're going to find those who are lost in our families, there is a starting point for us, and it is the Word of God reminded to you that Psalm 119 says, Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. We need the light of Scripture. When we realize that a family member whom we love so much does not know Jesus, This woman felt she needed light to begin her search. Second, she swept the house. In those days, it was customary to spread straw over the floor because the floor was dirt. In order to have something soft underfoot, straw would be spread. And a coin falling down amongst the straw, as you can imagine, would naturally be very difficult to find. So the woman took a broom and swept up all the straw, and thus it would have made it easier to find this this coin that was lost. So what does that symbolise to us? We need to let those children of ours that are lost and are yet to be part of the kingdom to see that we as parents or grandparents are not perfect and we shouldn't be claiming to be perfect, perfect. Freely admitting the mistakes that we have made. When my son left home and at 18 years of age and went to the, the, uh, to the Royal Australian Air Force, and when he began his part, when he graduated from pilot school in Perth, West Australia, I wrote him a letter. And in my letter, I said lots of things just for him. And in that letter, I said I was sorry for some of the things that I had done to him, being too tough on him, and so on. When we freely admit to the mistakes we have made, it'll make it possible for those who are lost to be found. The third thing this woman did was she searched diligently. She lit a lamp, she swept the house, and she searched diligently. This, this is a woman who was going to think about ways in which she could find the coin. See, she gave herself to the task. She did not just look for it in her spare time. She stopped everything and she swept the house out inch by inch. She went over the floor searching for this lost coin because it was so valuable to her. Jesus tells us to stop everything. And take time to know and to love those whom we know who are lost. And when she finds it, she will call in her friends and neighbours and say, Rejoice with me because I've found my lost coin. And in the same way there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. The joy that comes, that is expressed over the found coin reveals the depths, depth of God's love for his people. It shows that God's desire is for restoration and reconciliation, highlighting the celebratory nature of the kingdom of God when the lost are found. I think this story offers us a profound insight into the very heart of our Heavenly Father how he values every individual and his ceaseless effort to bring the lost back to him. It's a parable of hope reminding us of our worth in God's eyes 
and the joy that accompanies repentance and return. And I think we can gain a deep appreciation for the nature of God's love, the importance of every soul to him, bar none, and the celebration that occurs in heaven when a person is restored to God's loving embrace. As a father, there is nothing more satisfying than to find your children growing up into solid, trustworthy Christian maturity. And one of my kids is here today. There is nothing that warms the heart more than to see the evidence of faith, the warmth of Christian love, and the depth of Christian commitment in the heart of one of your own children. John writes, No greater joy can I have than to this, that my children follow the truth. That's joy. This came to me and... I found this poem during the week and it's sort of very relevant to me, I guess. And it just simply says, If I don't help my boy to grow up right, I'll call myself a failure no matter how much money I make or how big a reputation I get. I have a number of tasks to do, all of which I should like to do well. To be a failure in any one of them would be disappointing, yet I could bear that without whimpering if I was sure I had not failed my boy. Not so much of me in the bank and more of me and my best in the lad. That's what I should like to show at the end of my career. For me to succeed as a father, he must succeed. Unless my boy comes to manhood fit for the respect of his fellow men, I shall have been a failure. The glory of our handiwork lies not in us, but in our children. So our Lord describes the joy that was in the heart of this woman when she found her coin she calls her neighbors her friends to share in the joy her overwhelming joy despite all the problems that may come in the raising of our kids despite battles despite failures despite the tears despite heartaches as you see your own children coming to manhood and womanhood as they put their roots down into the depths of christian faith and as they've come to understand and to know the lord jesus as a living, vital factor in their lives, your own heart will be filled with a kind of joy as you see them entering life that is committed, concerned, growing, settled in their faith, solid and secure. And Jesus said that joy will be shared in heaven when that moment comes. There is a celebration in heaven when one of uh, these who are lost at home opens up his or her heart and finds a living Lord. He likens it as like a celebration that was held when the lost sheep was found. This reminds me of the 1812 Tchaikovsky Overture with the cannons and the the explosions uh, that brings great joy to me when I I watch it on my television with, with the full sound surrounding me, ringing the bells, swinging from chandeliers. That is the joy that is in heaven. A great time of unrestrained joy before the Lord over a lost one that is returned. What a revelation of the heart of God that is. How God longs to see those who are lost to be recovered. Whether they've wandered away or whether they are lost at home, all of us may experience or know of instance after instance of those who have been raised in my Christ, our Christian homes or a Christian home and are still lost. And my only encouragement to you this morning, if you are in that place, is allow this parable to inspire you to keep searching diligently for the opportunities to express the love of God to your child or your kids. To continue to value your son or your daughter that you will experience your journey and to celebrate every moment of spiritual recovery and growth, no matter how small, how minute it might be. So may my message this morning, this message of the lost coin, motivate us to cultivate our prayer life. This is where it starts. The light of God's word to illuminate us. Cultivating a life that will be fit for purpose. 
that we will be persistent in prayer and so that we might be able to know the profound joy that will come in the salvation story of, that God is writing in, on the hearts of each of our kids and each of those who are in our family, tribes that are yet to come into the kingdom. Let's pray. Father, some of this is tough because many of us have had situations where our children do not share our faith. May this be an encouragement, what we've shared this morning. May it be, Father, that it will, it, it will encourage us. It will move us, yes, to tears, to prayer, to seeking your face, to even boldly come before you to claim our kids for the kingdom. And if I am lost or any of us are lost in any shape or form, help us to recover that which is lost so that celebration can come about for Jesus' sake and his kingdom. Amen.